Scarlett from Fully Charged. Welcome Hello. to Norway. Thank you very much. I'm loving it so far. Yeah. Have you been in uh, Norway before? First time in Norway. First time in Norway. We've been wanting to come here and film this little documentary for a really long time. And with the number of petrol cars on the road dropping off, it seemed like the, the opportune moment to come and visit. Yeah. So what are you going to be getting up to this week, apart from driving these quite funky little Paxter electric uh, delivery cars? Yeah, we started off zooming around in these little weapons. We've got a couple of videos planned. We're doing a documentary uh, titled How Norway Killed the Petrol Car, where basically we've come here to understand what it is that, uh, that Norway are doing so much better than us and m many other parts of the world in terms of um, reducing the number of ICE cars on the road, incentivizing people to go electric, uh, what lessons can be learned, what can we go home um, armed with information wise. And we're also going to have a look at a couple of really exciting, quite futuristic EV technologies where, while we're here, namely uh, wireless charging, electric cars and battery swapping, which is a Neo specific thing and just ascertain how big a part those might play in the future. Mm. Is there still a lot of animosity in England towards electric cars amongst the private uh, sector? I think that a lot of the stigma is, is lessened these days. Things like range anxiety, these ideas of you know, the battery being completely unrecyclable, some, some fairly baseless rumours that had some weight to them not long ago have kind of subsided now, I think. The, the ongoing frustration is with the lack of infrastructure. Um, the, the, the fact that you kind of need to buy a Tesla if you don't want to have a sort of charging headache once a month um, and the lack of incentives from the government to, to encourage people to buy them. And recently you did a little bit of ice driving with uh, Polestar 2? Yeah, we did. We got to go up to the Arctic Circle and spend some time with the uh, special sort of Polestar 2 rally car that they've built. Very special experience. I, I, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what the sort of uh, real world implications are of me going rally driving in northern Sweden in terms of uh, important consumer journalism, but I'll get back to you on that. So uh, the biggest challenges in England to, to get the uh, electric car movement going, uh, what, what do you think needs to be done to, to really get some speed up on, on, on this? Well, in terms of government, I think the, the infrastructure thing is, is an ongoing problem. The fact that charges are so few and far between, the fact that they're poorly maintained, and actually the fact that you need a different login, RFID membership for every single one, it, it makes it daunting to people that haven't tried it before. And it's off-putting, and I think that uh, there's, there's a lot of room for improvement there. Uh, but car brands too, I think th there's too much focus on big, expensive, premium electric cars, and there is still a baffling lack of small, simple EVs. The few that there are are hugely successful and popular, and I think that, respectfully, some of these car manufacturers need to pull their finger out and offer us some simpler, cheaper electric cars to buy. And from the, you know, the, the kind of the high-end electric car to these little dudes here, how are you, how are you getting on with this little uh, funky little thing? I absolutely love this thing. There's something very pleasing about being in a vehicle that is just perfectly fit for purpose. And that's how this feels driving around a narrow city. It's, it's, it's really fun because the road feels like a racetrack in this. You can kind of kiss apexes <laughs> going through corners. Um, I don't know where we arrived at this point where it was just a given that all vehicles would be sort of four and a half metres long and almost two metres wide, but many cities, including mine, London, just aren't built for that kind of vehicle. And you get in something like this and it just makes sense. <laughs> Fully charged uh, YouTube site, is, is it just on YouTube? You have a net site, uh, website as well? Yeah, we've got a website, we do live shows, which are kind of like celebrations of all things electric vehicles, where you can test drive new cars and you can talk to people about replacing your gas boiler with a heat pump and fitting some solar panels to your roof. What we find is that once people have a little taste of this world, you kind of want the whole ecosystem. You get the electric car and then you want the charger at home and then you want your solar panels on the roof to power your charger. And we kind of encourage people to get involved in all facets of it. The YouTube channel is the main thing, that's what I do. We've got about 860,000 subscribers in the moment. Big push for a million, like and subscribe. Um, but yeah, it's a wonderful company to be a part of. It's, 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 nice to, uh, it's nice to be attached to a brand that is genuinely trying to make the world a better place and not just kind of pretending to. Early electric cars were punching bags, if the truth be told, there was plenty to make fun of because they were a bit rubbish, but of course they were, it's a shiny new technology. In motoring journalism in particular, I think that it's quite a nostalgic industry and there's this narrative that, oh, you know, the, the driver's car will die when the engine dies, it's a, it's a load of absolute nonsense. This is the future and it's exciting in every possible way and I think the thing that people don't realise is we're just scratching the surface of what electric cars are capable of. This is still very primitive technology and we have no idea what it may lead to and, and what we may see in the future.